let me start by thanking dr bansi sabu and the entire team of diacarecon for inviting me to speak on this glyptin symposium and i will be speaking on teneliglyptin we all know that teneliglyptin was launched in our country in 2015 and we have got a lot of clinical experience with this molecule uh, uh, globally i think we are having a lot of experience of use of this molecule in clinical practice in type 2 diabetes we all know that type 2 diabetes is a progressive disease and it has got a lot of pathophysiological defects and incretin defect is one of the important contributors to hyperglycemia in type 2 diabetes dpp4 inhibitors uh, through their uh, action on this incretin uh, axis they have got a glucose dependent mechanism of action and by that they improve insulin secretion they suppress glucagon uh, inappropriate glucagon secretion and they improve hyperglycemia at the same time they do not increase the risk of hypoglycemia because of this glucose independent mechanism of action we also know that in this era of patient centered diabetes care we need to prefer anti diabetic agents that have got a low risk of hypoglycemia as well as weight gain and which have shown cardiovascular safety or at least they are not increasing the risk of cardiovascular events that is what is required from an anti diabetic agent in the current era of patient centered diabetes care as far as glyptins are concerned they can be classified as per binding sites and if we see here then sitagliptin and teneliglyptin uh, they belong to class 3 where they bind to s1 s2 and s2 extensive subunit and this is because of that the teneliglyptin it has got a j shaped anchor lock domain and therefore it has got strength strongest binding among all dpp4 inhibitors to that site which is there on the dpp4 receptor and because of that it has got high selectivity stronger interaction and prolonged inhibition of dpp4 enzyme and this translates into more than 90% dpp4 inhibition within 2 hours and this is sustained up to 24 hours as evident from this graph where glp1 levels they are high even 24 hours after administration of teneliglyptin 10 mg and 20 mg so this gives you an idea that it has got a good 24 hour dpp4 inhibition which is required for clinical benefits definitely it improves insulin secretion it has got a prominent effect on beta cells by which it improves insulin secretion as evident from this graph this is prandial postprandial insulin secretion in same way postprandial glucagon suppression that is the main uh, advantage of glyptins that they act in a glucose dependent manner and they increase insulin and suppress glucagon response to glucose and that is evident with teneliglyptin also it has got a very good 24 hour glycemia control uh be it a 2 hour after breakfast after lunch or after dinner there is a significant reduction not only in fasting but across the day post meal glucose they are reduced to a significant extent and because of that if you see this data patients who are on insulin the glycemic fluctuations will go down and so this drugs they will definitely improve time in range when they are being added on to insulin and they flatten the glycemic fluctuations which are seen in type 2 diabetic patients on insulin therapy we all know that teneliglyptin is also potent it provides 0.8 to 0.9% hb on c reduction in monotherapy and when it is used on top of other therapies as a combination therapy then it provides additional 0.9 to 1% reduction it has got some effect on beta cell function that is data from homa beta cell function and uh, all the studies they provide uh, in vitro evidence of this drugs that they improve beta cell function but no clinical data is available as far as effect on beta cell function of glyptins is concerned and weight neutral we all know that most all the glyptins they are weight neutral and they are hypoglycemia friendly that is also we all know that the advantage of teneliglyptin is that it has got a dual mode of excretion because of that it can be used very safely in chronic kidney disease patients without any dose modification and that is the advantage of teneliglyptin as compared to vildagliptin or sitagliptin or sexagliptin where they require dose modification in ckd patients linagliptin is only other molecule which can be used very safely in patients with chronic kidney disease 
and it has got minimal drug to drug interaction potential the only gliptin having drug to drug interaction potential is sexagliptin because of its strong cyp3a4 inhibitors it has got interaction with multiple drugs let's take a look at the clinical experience of tenagliptin and i think the experience of tenagliptin is wide from our country from japan from korea and now also from china this is a study from china which was published in 2021 where they have tried to add tenagliptin to patients who were on metformin at least 1 g per day plus diet and exercise baseline a1c of 7 to 10% percent 51 sites in china and this is 24 week treatment period and hba1c was reduced to the tune of 0.8 to 0.9% in this category of patients and this is a poster which was presented from the organizers of this event that is diacare itself which was presented at ada in 2018 as a poster this was a fixed dose combination of tenagliptin with metformin 1000 mg in drug naive patients around 400 patients who were having baseline hba1c of 7 to 9 they were given this fixed dose combination and end at the end of 12 weeks there was a reduction in hba1c to 1.2% at 24 weeks 1.6% and at 48 weeks 1% and almost 66% of subjects they achieved hba1c less than 7% at 24 weeks so this gives you an idea that you can add on metformin and you can straight away start with tenagliptin and metformin in drug naive patients it is going to provide a good glycemic potency this is street india study which is a real world evidence with uh, uh, tenagliptin in our country across the country all the doctors who were using tenagliptin this is like a post marketing surveillance study and this is the where the tenagliptin was used 4.32% monotherapy otherwise is what it was add on either add on to metformin sulfonylurea or on a combination of metformin sulfonylurea metformin agi or even on the top of triple drug that is metformin sulfonylurea and agi and on the top of insulin with or without oids this is the way the tenagliptin was used in this study baseline hba1c was more than 7.5% in almost 87% of patients in this study and more than 9% in 21.25% of patients in this study and if you see the hba1c reduction when it was used as a monotherapy it was 0.98% when it was used with metformin 1.7% 1.07% and when it was used on the top of metformin sulfonylurea combination then it was 1.46% and corresponding decrease in fasting and postprandial plasma glucose was also evident from this real world study with tenagliptin in our country and so if you see across the spectrum whether it was used on top of two drugs or three drugs or on top of insulin there was a consistent reduction in hba1c to the tune of 1 to 1.5% and this real world retrospective data very well says that tenagliptin significantly improves glycemic parameters in type 2 diabetic patients in our country either as monotherapy or as add on to one or more anti diabetic drugs including insulin this is the recently published trick india 2 study which has analyzed more than 10000 patients same retrospective data patients who are on tenagliptin all over the country more than 10000 patients they have used uh, the retrospective analysis of all those patients and this is the way the tenagliptin was used most of the time it is in addition to metformin or metformin to sulfonylurea or on top of triple drug and also also along with insulin in 1% of patients and here if you see the hba1c was less than 8.5% in 50% and more than 8.5% in almost 50% and 10% were having hba1c more than 10% and there was a reduction in the hba1c at the end of 12 weeks in this category of patients to the tune of 1% fasting by 43 and postprandial by 87 mg percentage and when the hba1c baseline was less than 8.5 the reduction in hba1c was 0.87 and when it was more than 8.5 then the reduction was to the tune of 1.08 to 1.09% this gives you a hint that tenagliptin it improves glycemic parameters in type 2 diabetic patients treat india was a first study which was published in 2018 and this is 2021 10000 patients on tenagliptin and it gives you a confidence that you can use this molecule for glycemic reduction for glycemic efficacy in your type 2 diabetic patients
Let's take a look at one systemic review and meta-analysis of 10 randomized control trials. It concludes that tenalegliptine can reduce HbA1c to the tune of 0.82%. And there they have done sub-analysis, whether monotherapy or add-on to metformin or add-on to canagliposin or add-on to insulin or pioglitazone or sulfonylurea, all the across of the spectrum, if you see, there was a reduction in the HbA1c to the tune of 0 0.5 to 0.9%. So this gives you a hint that meta-analysis of randomized control trials again gives you confidence that tenalegliptin is providing good glycemic efficacy equivalent to other gliptins as far as type 2 diabetes management is concerned. Can we compare this drug with other gliptins? This is a Korean study where they have tried to compare with citagliptin in type 2 diabetic patients who were on sulfonylurea metformin and then they were put on either tenalegliptin 20 milligram or citagliptin 100 milligram for 24 weeks. And if you see the HbA1c reduction is almost same whether you use tenalegliptin or citagliptin. And they concluded that tenalegliptin is non-inferior to citagliptin in the context of triple therapy for type 2 diabetes and is an important option in this setting. And I think in our country, it is a very cost-effective option as a third-line agent on top of metformin and sulfonylurea. And this is the data from our own country, Professor V. Mohan and his group. They have done this insight study, tenalegliptin versus citagliptin in patients who were either on metformin or sulfonylurea. 20 milligram was compared with citagliptin, 100 milligram over 12 weeks. And if you see the HbA1c reduction, fasting and PPG almost equivalent citagliptin or tenalegliptin. However, more number of patients were able to reach less than 7% HbA1c at 12 weeks with tenalegliptin as compared to citagliptin. And there was no QT interval prolongation at the end of 12 weeks in both the arms, thereby suggesting that both the drugs, they were not having any impact on QT prolongation and at the same time, they were providing same glycemic efficacy. And the same if we see the QT prolongation data, which is recently published by the organizer of this event, uh, Dr. Bansi Sabu and his team. This is retrospective data of type 2 diabetes on tenalegliptin, 20 milligram or 40 milligram once daily as monotherapy or add-on therapy. And patients who were having ECG records before and after initiation, those were collected and those were analyzed. And if you see the QTC interval prolongation over a period of 12 weeks, it was only 0.33. And the, at the end of 12 weeks, it was 419 milliseconds. So there was no evidence of QT prolongation with tenalegliptin 20 or 40 in real world practice when it was used either as monotherapy or as add-on to a variety of agents. And at the same time, it provides glycemic efficacy in the form of reduction in HbA1c to the tune of 1% over a period of 12 weeks. So this gives you more confidence that this drug is effective. At the same time, the doubt about this drug, uh, its effect on QT prolongation is not there in real world evidence, which is generated from our country in the form of this QSET study and insight study. Uh, there is some data to support that tenalegliptin. This is a very small trial which gives you an idea that tenalegliptin might have got a better outcome uh, as far as LV function or adenopectin levels are uh, concerned. There is no randomized or there is no cardiovascular outcome data with tenalegliptin till date, but this is a recently published real world analysis from the Korea where they have tried to find out the cardiovascular outcomes in people with type 2 diabetes when they were on tenalegliptin as compared to the people who were on sulfonylureas. And if you see uh, this beautiful analysis, all cause mortality, hospitalization for heart failure, both together, myocardial infarction, stroke, or a composite of myocardial infarction, stroke, or all cause mortality, everything, the p-value is not significant. So this gives you an idea that tenalegliptin is, did not increase cardiovascular events as compared to sulfonylureas in people who are having type 2 diabetes in a real world evidence from the Korean this data analysis. And there was a, almost 50 to 60% reduction in hypoglycemia uh, as evident from this graph. The hazard ratio is 0.40. So 60% reduction in severe hypoglycemia 
as compared to sulfonylureas. So this gives you some confidence or reassurance that at least steneliglyphine is not associated with any increase in cardiovascular outcomes in type 2 diabetic patients. And this is first ever real world data from Korean study, which gives you uh, that teneliglyphine does not increase cardiovascular outcomes. It can be used in CKD. This is some data related to hemodialysis, where the patients are on hemodialysis, either newly started or switch it from Voglibos. There was a decrease in HbA1c and it is effective and it can be used. And there is some evidence to support that it improves endothelial function and reduces oxidative stress in patients with type 2 diabetes with CKD as compared to citaglipine as evident from this graphics. So if you see this RSSDI ESI therapeutic will, one of the important concerns in our country is finance or cost of therapies. As type 2 diabetes is a lifelong disease and people have to pay from their pockets, you have to give them cheaper options which are safe at the same time which are effective and which are providing good glycemic control without increasing the risk of hypoglycemia, weight gain or adverse impact on heart or kidney. And if we go through this therapeutic wheel, various POCs, then if we use Stanley with metformin, with or without SGLT2, I think this combination will cover almost all the things which are highlighted this in, in this RSSDI ESI therapeutic wheel. And this should be the combination of choice in our type 2 diabetic patients, whether you begin with Tenely metformin or you begin with SGLT2 metformin and then you add with Tenely gliptin. That is your choice, but this is going to be the combination which is to be used more frequently in type 2 diabetic patients so that we can give them a good glycemic control without increasing the rise, uh, risk of hypoglycemia, additional weight loss, additional blood pressure reduction, and additional cardio-renal protection. Thank you very much.